weather forecasters on TV or anywhere, meteorologists, and I don't say that to attack that profession, but they get to be wrong all the time and they have no accountability for it. <laughs> you can be wrong about every hurricane, every forecast, every threat of rain, every promise of sunshine, heat waves, cold snaps. You can always be wrong and yet you still keep coming back for more. That's the gloom and doom crowd right now about this pandemic. They are all about, well, yes, but, yes, but, yes, but. I mean, the numbers may be really going down. Oh, and they are. The new infections are going down. The, the deaths are going down. Thank God for that. And, you know, one death is too many. My heart breaks for everybody who has lost a loved one of any age. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you had a pre-existing condition. Who cares if you had a pre-existing condition? You know, COVID-19 is a vicious, vicious virus. But all the numbers are looking good. States that opened earlier than people wanted are not seeing spikes. States that stay closed are seeing spikes. Go figure. Hmm. Wonder why that is. I wonder why that is. In New York, a hundred guys got music going in the background for me. Can you cut that music? Thank you. On on sorry about that. On Saturday, we had 139 deaths in New York. Way too many. Way too many. That's about four, that's four times lower than it had been a few weeks earlier. Deaths are going down in New York. And the part that fascinates me is that around the country, areas that were willing to say, we're going to open, areas that were willing to say, we're going to take that chance, we're going to throw open the doors. You want to go to the store? Go to the store. You want to go to a restaurant? Go to a restaurant. You want to go out? Go out. We're not going to drag you around if you don't have, if you're not following our dictates. Well, here was Alex uh, Azar, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, being grilled by Jake Tapper on CNN yesterday. Listen to what Secretary Azar said about the states that are that opened versus the states that have stayed closed. Are they taking measures such as social distancing and masks that that make this reopening work? Yeah, Jake, I think your question is very insightful. We we are seeing that in areas that are opening, uh, we're not seeing the spike in cases. Uh, we still see spikes in some areas that are, in fact, closed, very localized situations. Huh. Say that again, Mr. Secretary. We're not seeing spikes in places that opened, but we are seeing spikes. We are seeing spikes where states stayed closed. Hmm. See, that's the kind of stuff that the media doesn't want to focus on at all. I just got a text message on the MyPillow text line. In Detroit, there's been a hotbed, and Michigan is very, very alive right now with passion, protests. People are really angry in Michigan. According to a text messenger, I don't know if it's true. I'm just telling you what I was just received. Zero deaths reported in the city of Detroit, which has been a hotbed of coronavirus. Listen, the numbers are completely down across the board. They don't want to acknowledge it because they want the misery index. They want the the angst. They want, uh, and, and listen, maybe some of them have a good faith intention in not getting complacent. And incidentally, I don't think we ought to get complacent. I do believe we ought to be careful. I do believe we still ought to be safe and we ought to stay six feet away from each other for the time being. And yep, you don't agree with me, that's all right. I think we ought to wear masks when we're in public, in particularly indoors around other people. Because I don't want to, to be asymptomatic. I don't want to get it somewhere and give it to somebody who might not make it. I, you, you don't want to do it that way, that's fine. I mean, I get it. We're America. You do what you you do what you feel comfortable doing. Uh, and I don't know. I could be so wrong and you could be completely right. I don't want to take the chance. I don't want to roll the dice. It seems to me 
it doesn't take a Rhodes Scholar to figure out if there's a transmissible disease, if it's a virus that we know is human to human, well, then the less human to human contact we have, the better. Don't know why that's hard for people. Uh, maybe people just don't care if they get it or not. I do. I don't want to be sick. I don't want you to be sick. I don't want anybody to be sick. So we're we're beating this thing. We are pushing this thing down. We are winning. And I can't speak for the rest of the world, but I like being on the side of optimism. I like being on the side of enthusiasm. That, of course, is best personified by this American president. Trump's attitude has been one of optimism, cheerleading for the American people, cheerleading for the private-public alliances that have been formed, rooting for technology to win, rooting for a vaccination that he says will come by the end of the year. A lot of the gloom and doomsayers say there's no way that's going to happen. Listen, I believe the American people are, the majority of Americans are a resilient, enthusiastic, optimistic bunch. Do you think the Democrats are being optimistic? Do you think the media is being enthusiastic or positive about these de decreasing numbers? I mean, across the board, new hospitalizations, new infection. And, and of course, it also doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that, of course, there's going to be a lot more testing being done, therefore more people showing having COVID-19. I don't know why that, why do, why does the media never make that connection? There's constantly the, oh, look at the, look at the spike in inspections here. Well, what was the testing? Oh, well, it was pretty dramatic. Oh, really? Well, then I guess you're going to see more infections, right? Listen, we all ought to know what we don't know. And there's plenty of this we still don't know. We're still figuring it out. But Americans are restless and Americans are ready to end this self-imposed economic disaster. We know this is a dangerous virus. It's there. We know that this, this is a challenge that we face. But my goodness, how much longer, how much longer is America supposed to be hiding out in fear? I, 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 I yelled so loud at the TV yesterday morning. I watched Fox News Sunday with Chris Wallace. And he had on the former head of the CDC, the former head of the CDC, Tom Frieden. Tom Frieden kept saying, well, we can't, we go too fast. We go too fast. It's going to be a disaster. It's going to be, we're going to see back in the fall where it's like Bright said last week, the whistleblower. It's going to be a cold winter. It's going to be the winter of 2020. And I was begging Chris, screaming at Chris, would you ask him what it looks like then? as to when you think, Mr. Expert, we can start resuming America again. Never asked the question. Never asked, never answered. In other words, it's the weatherman. The weatherman can say it might rain today at 5 o'clock. This afternoon we're going to have thunderstorms. If it doesn't, oh, well, he was wrong. We love him. He's our weather guy. The CDC folks keep saying, this could be bad, this could be... Okay, well, when do you think it'll be all right? They'll never tell you. They won't say. The, the host yesterday on Fox News Sunday never asked, and the guy on the, on, on, that was answering the questions sitting out in the field somewhere in New York City, wherever he was, would never answer. He didn't have to answer because I was screaming, all right, you don't like the idea of opening too soon. Well, what's what's it look like not to be too soon, Mr. Former Head of the CDC? What does that look like? What does not too soon look like? If you think we're opening too soon, and now 48 states, I think, of all 50, have some form of opening up. They have some degree of a, what does it look like? You're going to tell me, say it out loud. You don't think we can open until there's a vaccine? You don't think we can open until the virus is completely gone? Tell us! And they never will. That ought to be a big red flag. Welcome in. It's Monday, May the 18th. The ReliefFactor.com studios is up and open for business. I hope you join me. 1-800-655-MIKE. Press 1 to come on air with us. I'd love to get your voice on all of this. 
1-800-655-6453. If anything I've said is wrong, I always put you to the top of the line. You know me. I love debate. I appreciate dissent, especially in times like these. 1-800-655-MIKE. Press 1 to come on air, 2 to leave a voicemail message. You can also text us your comments to the My Pillow text line, which is also 800 655 64 Five, three. We're at 475 kids that we're going to be sending big gift baskets to, big, big goodie boxes, big care packages through our Prison Fellowship Angel Tree campaign. Could today take us over 500? Do I dare dream that maybe today we can get to 550? We've had some good days last week. 1-800-655-6453. 